Salon 2012 with Christian von Königsegg and the newly presented 2012 updated Königsegg Aviera R and with the engine at display. Please describe to us, Christian, an overview of this updated engine. My pleasure. So what you see here is the 2013 Königsegg Aviera R engine. I will show you a bit about the details and, and, and the differences in the upgrades. So if you come around here, Gustav, I'll show you one important factor that also affects the way the uh, engine looks up here is the fact that we are we develop uh, our own uh, engine management system from circuit board up all the way to the final software. Uh, we use the latest uh, Freescale uh, Motorola processor that has only been around for a couple of months. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is partially uh, to enhance performance on the engine, but also to comply with the latest uh, OBE regulations, for example, required by CAR. And it also is a platform to build for the future for added technology to the engine. Uh, we're very proud of being able to do that. Um, so this ECU here um, now also controls a, a, a more powerful coil-on plug. Uh, system for the uh, spark plugs, um, so we can have higher RPM, we maintain boost pressure, so we have a higher spark intensity, so we can bring up the, uh, uh, the RPM limit from 7,250 to 7,500, thereby increasing uh, horsepower by around 30 horsepower. You can see there's a new intake here, intake panel, with dual um, electronic throttle bodies, which is optimized and tested. We have reduced the uh, panel volume to make the response even more uh, rapid and, and, and better. Uh, and also optimized flow to have an even flow to each cylinder. So it looks quite interesting. And the dual injectors, have you had that before? So we've had for quite a long time, yes. yes. Uh, so we have one small injector that is acted up to around 300 horsepower. We have one bigger injector that is phased in after, uh, after that, so you can, we can have enough flow for around 2,000 petrol horsepower, as we also have flex fuel around ethanol, which consumes a lot of more volume uh, for the same amount of energy. So here we have uh, the Aguirre flex fuel sensor. So this actually measures uh, the amount of ethanol in the fuel, and we measure this between the fuel race, fuel race, so we're in the middle of or wherever where the fuel is actually being injected. It's the best spot to measure what's going on when you're flexing between different fuels. So you can you can have a 37 percent mix of E85. You can go from zero to hundred percent ah. ethanol. And um, as you can see from this sign, uh, we have a couple of uh, interesting records for production engines. Um, we have the highest cylinder pressure of any um, production engine in the world, even higher than the most extreme diesel engine. And this is the only um, spark plug or auto engine uh, that has a higher cylinder pressure than a diesel engine. It's a 32 bar V map. It's very, very extreme. It's 31 percent higher than the most extreme competitor. And it's also the most downsized production engine in the world, as we have 228 horsepower per engine liter. And that's 33% higher than any other production engine in the world. We also have 240 newton meters per liter engine volume. So this means actually we would take this technology and make a one liter engine, we would have around 230 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque. So that's really a massive amount of downsizing. Then we have as the engine weighs with the flywheel clutch, Inconel exhaust system and turbos, uh, it weighs 197 kilos. Wow. Uh, we have most horsepower per kilo of any engine in the world, any production engine in the world. Um, the nearest competitor has three horsepower per kilo. So it's really a dense package of power. So the exhaust system is uh, ceramic coated uh, Inconel uh, material, same as used in Formula One today. And uh, we have made the, the headers as compact as short as possible, but at the same time with very good directional 
well angled towards the turbine to really get good spool up and minimal back pressure even though we have a quite small exhaust housing um, so that we get good spool up so uh, we get actually 0.5 bar already at 2300 rpm and at 2700 rpm we have uh, uh, as much as we want out of the turbo then we wastegate it off so really has made our engine much more torquey. And what is the torque at this RPM? Well, we, uh, from 3000 RPM, uh, we have 1000 Newton meters, <laughs> and a little bit above that it goes up to 1200, and there we cap it, that's yeah. pretty much enough. Uh, and it go, that, does it go down, uh, you cap it electronically? Yeah, we cap it electronically, ah. and uh, we keep it there up until around 7000 RPM, so it's uh, uh, and, massive. Uh, and then it goes down, like, down naturally. Yeah, we, we, we don't few. exactly. Okay. We don't. We, we reduce uh, boost pressure at the final yeah. top end to get a natural. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, so we really work a lot with reducing back pressure. So we have a, a patented system where we uh, have some valving in the exhaust system to uh, optimize uh, the flow around the catalytic converter, the pre-cap and the main cap. So we have the lowest back pressure of any production engine exhaust. Still, we comply with uh, we, we can meet all the mission regulations in the world in, in testing so far. Uh, how many patents do you have on this engine? Uh, well, around. Uh, I would say on this engine the patents evolve mostly the exhaust system. Yes. Uh, but then we have some uh, turbo patents as well, which is not implemented here yet. Ah. And, uh, and and some other patents which we work more internally in the engine, which, which upcoming. Yes. So it's uh, this is more, this is more uh, fine engineering and, and honing and perfecting uh, the combustion engine. So, so, so you had a feel that you wanted to fine tune the Agera R engine. Well, it's it's to meet future regulations to make it really efficient, um, lightweight, and, and have a very nice character of the engine. And uh, to to polish that zero to three hundred time as well, maybe. Well, yeah, I, mean, I guess, but I mean, with more power, and then we have the carbon fiber wheels, of course, and a lighter car. And Looks it promising. Hurt. It hurt, right? <laughs> and also, I, I like a little touch you added, which uh, the signature of the builder uh, of the engine. Yes, I mean, we build these engines from the ground up in our factory. It takes about one week to build an engine. Uh, the, uh, the engine block is uh, cast in the UK uh, by a company called Rainier and World. And it comes raw to Sweden, uh, where we machine it and install the, the cylinder liners and hold it, and then we assemble it in our factory. We assemble everything from uh, bare components, and then we run it in our engine dyno uh, for about six, seven hours, and make sure everything works as intended. And then we install it in the car. And then we run the car, in the chassis dyno, and then on our airfield. So it's a pretty rigid testing procedure, but they they really work very stable and, and very similar all engines, very similar. And also on the engine block you have several uh, Koenigsegg logos and, and uh, the engine number is that also on the... Yeah, you can see the engine number here. Ah, there, that's right. And what do the numbers indicate here? It indicates series and type of engine and, and, uh, and also uh, when it's built. Yes. And here you have some uh, ho holographic... Uh... Yeah, it's to show its original parts for Koenigsegg. This is a, a Japanese high-power uh, coil on plug. And uh, I assume this is not 24 carats gold? No, it's, it's coated titanium. Okay. So these parts is new uh, on the updated Agera R. Yes, yes, and the dual throttle bodies. And lovely with the Koenigsegg logo here as well. Yes, quite okay, nice. Okay, thank you Christian for this insight. My pleasure. And um, now we have talked a lot about the exterior of the engine. Now we should hear something more about the interior of the engine. Yeah, we have some very unique technology actually in the combustion chamber and the way how all the components interact. We have a fairly high compression ratio for having uh, 1.4 bar of boost, which I guess is around 20 psi, it's 9, 9 to 1. And we can actually run up to 960 horsepower on US 93 octane, which is 
and yes, between 95 and 96 uh, European octane, um, which is very high without, without running into knocking issues and so on. So we, we, we have optimized the combustion process for that being possible by having a special shape of the combustion chamber and also the way how the piston top surface interacts with the combustion chamber. So we've been able to raise ignition and boost and cylinder pressure even on fairly low octane due to that. And, and that makes it possible to have this extreme high uh, mean uh, brake pressure in the cylinder that gives all this power even on very reasonable octane fuel.